Hello everyone and welcome back. Hope we're having a great day and we're all doing well. So we are now less than a month away to the massive Year 9 cinematic, which will set up the lore for the entirety of Year 9. We're probably going to see Deimos attacking Emerald Plains, if you don't know. The intel in which Wolfgard found on Lair, which is Deimos's Lair, of his army, the Kires Legion. There is some intel in which Tuberau and Thunderbird found on this base. We, as the player, can even see this in the game itself. We have have a board which shows that Harry has been eliminated, Sam Fisher is a target as well, and the biggest thing here it seems is the fact that Emerald Plains is going to be attacked by Deimos. And we now know from the comic book in Operation Deep Freeze that Emerald Plains is a dark site which is used by Rainbow's overhead committee for their meetings. Which makes a lot of sense, we never really understood why Ubisoft released a new map set in a country club in the countryside of Northern Ireland, but now we finally know that this is a club in which Rainbow's overseeing committee go to. They have meetings there and I can assume they maybe play a bit of golf. I wouldn't even be surprised if ex-Rainbow director Aurelia will be in the cinematic. I mean, they do have to get the likeness of Angela Bassett for this because she did play Aurelia and give her face over for it. So maybe outside of things that's not likely since they then do have to pay a big Hollywood actor for that. But I do like to think in universe Aurelia would probably be attending these meetings. But yes, we know that Deimos is going to attack the overseeing committee and politicians above Rainbow. And now there's another major factor in Rainbow Six Siege lore, which we haven't really heard from in over a year at this point, and that is Nighthaven. We have heard some stuff from them throughout the battle passes. I believe it was Operation Dread Factor's battle pass. We heard some Nighthaven opinions, Deimos and Rainbow's current situation. And they did say, however, that they're going to stay out of it, which in Nighthaven's defense is exactly what Kavir Vera told Callie to do when she confronted her on the runway at Nighthaven's base in Singapore. Nighthaven were gearing up to stop their stolen gear from being sold, and Rainbow intercepted that, say, look, you're not going to start a war over this, we're going to deal with it, stay out of it. And like I said, Nighthaven have honoured this, but how long will Nighthaven stay out of it? I mean, at this current point in time, Nighthaven don't really need to get involved from their perspective. They're not on the payroll anymore, and it doesn't really concern them. And I have said in the past, I definitely think operators who are in Nighthaven, specifically the ones that left Rainbow, are going to be a massive pull factor for Nighthaven to get involved. I mean, you've got Ella in Nighthaven, whose sister is currently being attacked by Deimos. I mean, she was in that blast which happened at the beginning of Year 8. You have Pulse, whose ex-lover, Habana, is literally one of the captains of the squads fighting Deimos. And you've also got operators such as Aruni, who have a really good friendship and relationship, not necessarily romantic with Red Hammer leader Thermite. Years before Thermite was even in Rainbow, Thermite and Aruni had an operation in Bangkok, causing Aruni to lose limbs and Thermite getting those burn marks on his hand. So I definitely do think that the relationships between Nighthaven and Rainbow are what going to bring them together again. I really can't see them being separated for the entirety and the rest of Rainbow Six Siege lore. And I believe there's stuff in the current battle pass for Operation Deep Freeze which plays into this theory. I have an entire video taking a look at the lore of the battle pass. However, there is some specific information in this and some specific operators which we're going to take a look at. So this first operator is Mira. Mira plays a very important role in Rainbow. Not only is she a member of the Viper Strike Squad led by Captain Habana, but Mira is also the director of R&D. And I don't know how canon this is, but according to the tutorials now in Rainbow Six Siege, if you don't know they sort of update them a bit, it also seems like Mira is now part of the Rainbow Operation staff, which Sam Fisher is is the only other member of as far as we are aware. But yes, with Mira being the director of R&D, that means she is pretty much responsible for making a lot of the gadgets in which Rainbow uses. Of course, it's not just her by herself, but she's up there, she's calling the shots, she's getting her hands dirty and developing these gadgets, she's extremely smart, and she is an integral part of Rainbow. And you have this little quote by her in the battle pass which says, I'm doing my best to keep our gear cutting edge. I hate to admit it, but having Osa here would get better results. I could use her vision. So this is one of the most important members of Rainbow saying that she wants Osa's help pretty much to keep up with Deimos and the Kira's Legion. Because we found out in the comic book for Operation Heavy Metal that the bullets in which the Kira's Legion members are using are able to penetrate armor, even rooks. So Mira having to basically develop new tech to counter this new enemy, it's understandable how she'd kind of want Nighthaven back because Osa is a direct 
director of QCR at Nighthaven, which is basically Nighthaven's R&D department. So Mira definitely sees Nighthaven's and Osa's value, especially when it comes to keeping up with Deimos. Just goes to show how advanced the Kira's Legion are. So with Mira being possibly one of the highest ranking operators inside of Rainbow right now, this is a big thing for her to say. And so I think what Mira said would have been enough, however, she isn't the only operator in this battle pass to say that they want Nighthaven back. Zofia also made a little statement as well. She says, with the danger we face, our issues with Nighthaven feel trivial. We could certainly use their resources. So that is yet another Rainbow operator flat out saying they want Nighthaven back, they want to be working with Nighthaven again, they want Nighthaven's help to defeat Deimos. And I also said this in my Battle Pass lore video as well, but Zofia could also talking about Ella in the respect of using their resources, cause the resources also include their soldiers as well, and she knows how good a fighter her sister is, so there might be a deeper meaning to that as well. But without having to look too deep, Zofia is just flat out saying that she wants Nighthaven's help. I definitely think this is going to reach a point in year 9. And if you thought Mirror and Zofia was enough, there's another operator in this battle pass lore which mentions Nighthaven and how he wants them back. And that is Legion. He says the following, This is the last thing Osa designed before Nighthaven left. Remind me why we're mad at them? And what he's referring to is this headgear and uniform you can get in the battle pass, which a lot of the stuff in the battle pass isn't lore based, it's just skins that look cool and it's just for gameplay, just, you know, cool skin, buy this. But Legion skin is actually a lore-based exosuit which was designed by Nighthaven, which kind of makes him look like a Power Ranger shark. But I will say, for a technologically advanced private military, this is probably something I'd imagine they'd make. And also, this isn't the only suit they've ever made Legion. His elite skin is also made by Nighthaven. That's why you can find his elite suit in the exosuit room on Nighthaven Labs. I don't know if this is implying that every operator maybe got a little exosuit made for them, or they specifically liked Legion especially to make two exosuits for him. It's interesting. The Legion seems to be very happy with the tech. You know, the way he says that, he's like, why are we mad at them? Like, look at the suits they made for us. They've made me two insanely cool exosuits. Shouldn't it not be better to have these people in our team, especially now more than ever? And of course, a lot of operators had their differences with Nighthaven, they didn't agree with Nighthaven, but the one who pushed that the most is Ash, and Ash, right now, is in a coma. So with the threat of Deimos being so prevalent, the turmoil between Nighthaven and Rainbow being trivial in the words of Zofia, and Nighthaven's most vocal critic, Ash, being in a coma, it's not that surprising that a lot of Rainbow operators are kind of taking a step back and being like, we need Nighthaven here. They would be so helpful. Mira is seeing the tech in which Kirez is developing and she's like, you know, Osa would have helped so much right now. Legion's looking at all this powerful tech and suits which Nighthaven made for them and he's like, why did we get rid of them? This is great. We need this stuff to fight the Kirez Legion, especially if Rook's armor isn't even going to stand against it. And Zofia taking a step back, being one of the operators who was involved in that explosion that Deimos set off, being like, yeah, this, this beef is just trivial. This is so unimportant. And she probably feels the same way about Ella. And I definitely think that Zofia is ready to make amends with Ella. And judging by one of the previous battle passes we got on this year, I can't remember the exact season, but Smoke was basically talking to Ella and was asking her why is she still down? Zofia is okay. Showing that Ella does still care for Zofia and she was sad when Zofia got hurt. So I think the sisters reuniting might happen in year nine. And I feel like if Ash does wake from her coma, I feel like that might be something we see maybe at the beginning of the cinematic, uh, which does come out next month. I can imagine, picture it in my head, like it starts and it has Ash in the Hereford military hospital and she wakes up and then like she looks at, I don't know, maybe they have like a, a rainbow channel on her phone, you know, like a secure channel and she is still getting updates to that phone. Attack imminent on Emerald Plains. Operators dock mirror rook, blah, blah, blah. Engaging now. And then it will cut to that. I have a vision we might see that play out. Or just like how the weapon sale was a bait to lure in operators, what if Deimos knew that his lair was being infiltrated and just put up a bunch of bogus information, all false, saying that he's going to attack Emerald Plains, and this is actually to divert attention away from maybe trying to, you know, put Ash down while she's in her coma. They can do so much with this, and we're just less than a month away from the cinematic. I'm so excited, and I'm sure all of you are as well. Unlike last SI, I'm not going to be attending this one, so I'm going to be here, I'm going to be at home, and I'm going to be live streaming this on my Twitch 
Kudos R6. We're gonna watch the cinematic together on my stream, so follow it now to get that notification when it does come. Drop a like on this video if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you're new. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Have an incredible rest of your day. I love you all. Stay safe. Peace.